Hey Porsche, all the senior people at Porsche, here's a little wake up call for you. One of your diehard Porsche fans has bought an Aston Martin instead of buying the new Panamera. And that's because you don't let us buy the cars we really want. Hello. Welcome to my new car. Isn't this beautiful? Real English luxury. I'm so proud of what we produce. Beautiful glass key. A pain in the backside to carry because it doesn't go in a keychain. I'm going to lower the windows so you can hear the engine start. It is so beautiful. Isn't that amazing? And it has double glazed windows. So when you close the windows, it's silent. The screen pops up when you put it into a reverse and the reverse camera switches on. After considerable deliberation, spending two weeks, maybe even more, two and a half weeks searching for a car, trying out different cars, I chose this. Many reasons for that. First and foremost, it is English, and of course James Bond drove this, so I have to be seen in one of these. He'll make me James Bond automatically. Well, they've done very well selling the image through the films, but that's not why I bought it. I drove the Ferraris, and for some reason they're not really my cup of tea. They're not the kind of cars that I see myself in. I think maybe they're more of a young person's car, um, even though they are very expensive and out of reach for many people who are in their youth. I test drove the Panamera, as you know. I loved it. But I also have had a few Panameras and Buying the new Sport Turismo just meant that it would be the same car, same feel, same everything, just with some additional extras. A bit boring. So, I've had about 15 Porsches in the last 10 years, and I think it, um, it was time to try something new, especially that Porsches are becoming harder and harder to get because of their marketing strategies and creating these limited edition cars. So I couldn't get the GT3, I couldn't get the GT4, I couldn't get the new GT3, and at least not in this year, and obviously I didn't even ask for the 911R because that would be impossible. And uh, even the Boxster Spider from 2015-16. And the dealers have all been very cocky and rude in the way that they position things. This chap from Porsche East London said to me, if you buy four cars from me and try not to negotiate the price, just pay whatever and then we will see if we can put you on a list for the GT3 and that will be us gifting you £50,000 because obviously the car goes up in price. And I don't like being held to ransom or being told that they're going to do me a favour by selling me something. If they're so arrogant, then in the long run they'll learn their lesson the hard way. I'm just one of the few who've left from being a Porsche enthusiast and I've bought something else, I'm sure others will follow. 
I'm, I've said this before and numerous other people have said it, that on the one hand they sell their cars as cars for the enthusiasts and the car lovers to own their cars, but then they produce them in such limited numbers and they announce that up front, making it impossible for everyday ordinary people to buy them. All the dealers, investors, and their friends basically get those cars. Companies that don't realize the long-term damage that this does to their brand suffer the consequences. It's very, very normal for companies to look at short-term gains and forget about the long-term damage. Mercedes is a typical example. They looked at short-term gains, damaged their brand by not focusing on the quality control of their cars, and now Mercedes is just an ordinary car. It used to be a very prestigious car a while ago. Um, and I guess Porsche are doing the same thing, that they are alienating their die-hard fans by not selling them their cars. And like I said in one of my previous videos, there are numerous ways of resolving these issues and creating lotteries and other sort of random ways of selecting buyers rather than creating this kind of a hype. I mean, they got what they wanted from the 911R. I don't know if any other car in the recent history has had so much hype and has been sold on the black market at such astronomical uh, prices. But in the long run, this will have an impact. And I'm an example of that impact. Instead of buying a new Panamera, I bought an Aston Martin. And so far, I absolutely love it. The car is 550 brake horsepower, same weight as the Panamera that was 300 brake, and this is beautiful. I mean, I, I must say that I should have looked at these a long time ago, because the finish, the quality, the leather, the sound system, it has a Bang & Olufsen sound system. When you switch on your music with the double glazed windows, it's like you're sitting in your living room listening to a live orchestra. It is beautiful. Um, the sound of the car without a sports exhaust is so beautiful. And it shifts like a beast. It's so fast. And yeah, so overall, so far, I'm absolutely delighted by the car. And the respect you get, <laughs> amazing. I don't even know how to describe it. I've had numerous good cars. Um, I've had Range Rovers and BMWs and so many other brands. Um, obviously, I always had Porsches as my main cars, but I had other cars on the side. None of those cars ever got the respect that this thing, whenever I am trying to make a U-turn or pulling into traffic, into roads, people let you go. In the Porsche, no one lets you go. They think you're a knob. But in an Aston Martin, Somehow people respect you, and I don't know why. Maybe it's the kind of people who buy Aston Martins have, over the years, created an impression that people respect them. But <laughs> it's amazing. Um, it's V12, 6 litre, and the torque and the power, it's just flows. It's so much power reserve on the side, just sitting there whenever you want. And then, the other day, I thought, hmm, let's see if I can throw this car around and do what I could do in my Porsches. So I switched to the sport mode and released my heavy foot. Gosh, it was so good that I had to literally release the foot off the gas because there was too much power. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but it was too much power. And I thought, hmm, will I be able to stop this car? Are the brakes good enough? But it just shifts. And it doesn't have a PDK gearbox, but it has these paddles and an old-fashioned gearbox, which I had forgotten how great they are. People moan and say, oh, PDKs are quick and things. This one gives you the little kick in the back when it changes gears. And 
I specifically chose, so I had a, this is a used car, and I had a choice of buying the one which had an 8-speed gearbox and a 6-speed gearbox. So I drove both the cars, and I realized that if you're driving it in automatic all the time, the 8-speed, you don't notice it, it changes gears in the background. But if you drive it in manual, the way I do, then you have to drop down at least two gears each time you want to do, because the gear ranges are smaller, and you don't really enjoy it as much because the gears, you have to change gears way too much. There's not enough in the gear range. So I chose the six speed, which I think a lot of people will say, oh no, you should have chosen the latest one. But that's what the marketing machine and the salespeople do because they want to sell you new things. They're not going to tell you to buy an old thing. I mean, this is a year older than the other one, which had, which was an eight speed. But I, when I drove this, I really enjoyed this more. And it was a few thousand pounds. It wasn't a massive difference in the price. But it was more enjoyable. And for me, a car is there for enjoyment rather than as an investment. What's the point of buying something if I'm not going to enjoy it every day? I might have a newer car with a newer gearbox. But then I'll be bored of it. Might as well get something that I'll enjoy every day and think, yeah, I made the right decision. So I showed you that blue with the light interior car that I like the color of, but this one is gray. It's the quantum gray, as they call it. I think it's the same color as the Quantum of Solace James Bond film. And uh, as much as I like the blue car, I thought there's no harm buying this one because it's as beautiful and most Aston Martins uh, have been known or have that grey colour associated with them. So, and if I want a blue one, I can always have it wrapped. These days, you can change the colour of the car without any issues, very quickly. But I absolutely love the colour and it is an amazing car. It was extremely low mileage uh, for compared to the car that was newer. It was a year newer, but had more miles on this. This car is as good as new. I mean, inside, outside, it's immaculate. There's no swirl marks. Oh yeah, that's another thing. The Aston Martin paintwork, I didn't know about this, but they have a completely different old-fashioned way of doing their painting and preparing their cars. So uh, I think modern cars, including Porsche and other German cars, they have those baking uh, ovens where the cars go in and the color is baked and whatever but this one has a really thick coat and it's very deep and beautiful you can actually tell there's layers and layers of colors and lacquer and paint on the car and the fact that it's a two three year old car it uh, doesn't have any swirl marks so whoever kept it really looked after it uh, and I love my car so I'm going to maintain it but everything in this car was just immaculate, so I had to have it. Um, I saw it, the first day that I saw it is the day I bought it and walked away with it on that day from the showroom. <laughs> I'm very impatient and uh, when I want things, I want them there and then. So as I saw the advert, I rang the dealer and I said, is the car prepared? If I like it, can I take it? And he said, yes, I'll make sure it's prepared. I think there's a lot of propaganda in the car industry, the automotive industry, where dealers and people, the journalists, create this image of certain cars. And as I was talking about buying an Aston Martin, uh, many people who were commenting on it were talking about whether it's a good idea or not, and I was getting I don't know, being told by various people that, oh, it's, it's expensive to run and maintain and all that. To be honest, the insurance is the same as the Panamera, so it's no more expensive. The tax is higher because obviously it's a six liter engine and it produces more emissions, so the government wants to take your money, never mind the trucks and buses and all the other pollution that's being generated in the environment. 
um, and they say it's heavy on fuel. For a 6 litre 12 cylinder engine, it's doing 16 to 18 miles to a gallon in London in traffic. So I don't think that's bad. Unless you have a diesel car, this is normal because in my 911 I get 16 to 18 miles to a gallon in London. On the motorway I get about 30 and I think on this car uh, on the motorway I was getting about 22. But it's a massive beast with so much power and I think if I drove it nicely it would probably do better but it's so tempting to drive it hard because it just shifts so quickly. Um, so yeah, so far so good. The things that are most amazing that I love about this is the in sitting inside, the finish, everything is beautiful. I, mean, this is, I don't think this is Alcantara, this is suede and there's no nothing cheap in this car. Everything that you touch is beautifully done. The rear seats are smaller than the Panamera and I knew that before I was buying it, but I didn't really care. Those seats are just for emergencies from time to time if I have to take some friends from one place to another. Usually it's just me. And uh, as a GT car for touring around Europe, I think this is amazing because it has the sport mode, it has the adjustable damper so you can stiffen the suspension or make it soft. It's powerful and it's graceful. I mean, they, I don't think in my hunt for the new car, there was any other car that I could compare to this in the beauty, the lines, the shape, everything in this car is just amazing. So I can't say that I like the shape of the Ferrari or the uh, Bentley or the new Porsche more than this. This was by far the most beautiful car and I just wanted to try the others to make sure that I wasn't going to get better experience from the others in the drivability and therefore I would choose a car that I would really enjoy and I must say that I, tro I drove the Rapide, the Rapide S, the DB9, the Vanquish and this was the car that I loved the most. Whenever you put your foot down, it's like a, an angry lion that roars. It's so, so beautiful and so intoxicating. And you put your foot down, no drama, no nothing, just bursts into power and accelerates and then you don't feel that you're going so fast. The other day, I was on the motorway and it was a clear stretch. So I wasn't, because if there's other cars next to you, you can feel that you're faster than them. But I put my foot down without thinking and the feeling that I would get in the Panamera thinking, oh, I reached 70 miles an hour. I looked at my dash and I was like, oh my God, I'm going way faster than the speed limit. I should slow down. So I did slow down, but, and I won't tell you how much I was doing, but it was shocking because in the Panamera, I would know, I would feel, and this thing, no feeling. Most beautiful thing is it has a hydraulic steering, which I kept moaning about in my other cars, and that's why I love the Boxster 987 so much. This one has a hydraulic steering, and you, when you're driving, you can feel the car. It has this massive center console, which didn't really make any sense to me when I first saw it, but now I understand why they have it. It's because, um, Apparently the gearbox is in the back, the engine's in the front to balance the weight and therefore they had to have a drive shaft going to the back and I don't know the details, not very technically savvy when it comes to this but the dashboard, beautiful everything, sat nav that everyone complained about in the various reviews that I read about the Aston Martins, it's better than the Porsche. So, I don't know why people were moaning about it. Um, it shows you the street signs as, as you see them on the road. It's beautiful because when I was on the motorways and places where you had to change a lane or you have to keep a lane, 
in other sat navs it just has these arrows saying go into this lane whereas on this sat nav it displays the street signs and the road just like you are looking at it it's really fascinating um, and it, I mean it's very clever and maybe not revolutionary but it's really convenient because you look at it you know exactly where you need to be because it's like a replica an image of the road in front of you on your screen there are some niggly bits of course it would be nice if it had a touch screen but you have to go through this little knob thing uh, but it takes into all the traffic jams into account um, so overall the sat nav does what it's supposed to do it has bluetooth obviously for the phone um, all the other things that all the modern cars have but the most amazing thing is the bang and olsen sound system you switch it on and Waltz number two from the Jazz Suite number two by Shostakovich. Andre Rio with his Johann Strauss Orchestra. And I tell you, ticket. See, it's like I'm sitting in a concert hall, and as you switch on the radio or the sound system the speakers, they raise up, and when you turn it off, they disappear. It has this automatic sound management system that monitors, I think, the weight in the seats or the seat belts so it knows how many passengers are in the car and it adjusts the sound accordingly so everyone can enjoy the music. Um, you can also change the focus from, a, from the driver focus to surround to concert hall, all these kind of amazing things. So if you don't want to listen to the exhaust, which at the moment because it's a new car I don't play the music very much because I won't listen to the exhaust. Um, I'm sure there'll come a time when I'll get used to it and then start enjoying the sound system more and the other thing is everywhere I go people take pictures of it the other day I stopped somewhere and this guy started filming me as I was parking and continued to film me until I got out of the car locked it and walked away so <laughs> I didn't think Aston Martins were that special but obviously they are but yeah, here's a little brief update of the car. Just really, really good. Um, thanks for watching once again, as always. More videos to come about this car and uh, keep your comments flowing. It's really lovely to hear from all of you, especially my viewers who've been there from the very beginning and have followed the journey over the last four months and uh, I'm now looking for a, a new contract or a new job because I've had nearly four months off. I took three months out to start making videos and to enjoy life a little. But now it's time to get back to work, which also means that I'll have to cut back on the number of videos I make. But what I'm thinking is maybe I'll try to make at least one video a week because I've become quite lazy as a result of being unemployed and uh, not been doing much except watching a lot of Netflix and YouTube and eating like a junkie and become fat. So once I'm back at work, I can have a better schedule and do things like a normal person. Sitting in my own concert hall, so beautiful.